Hey everyone, so I'm Bernice. Welcome to this video. So it's already September and we are reaching the end of the year. So I thought that I would make a wrap-up video for most of the books that I've read this year. And to do that, today we are going to be doing a book tag. So this book tag is something I actually saw from Clockwork Reader. And I'll be linking her video down below and also the original book tag video. So if you guys are interested in knowing about which books I liked and which books I did not like so much and also everything else in between, please watch the rest of the video. So yeah. Okay, so the first question for the book tag is... What is the best book that I've read so far this year? And this is going to be like an objective answer and not necessarily my favorite book. But I think that the best book I've read so far this year was The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, which I think is quite expected if you guys are able to watch my reading vlog. Um, I did end up giving this book 4.5 or 5 stars, I think. So the reason being is because I really enjoyed the world building and also the writing style of the author. I think that the book really did a good job in letting the readers feel like they were part of the characters in the book. So I really did enjoy the plot as well. Um, not necessarily my favorite book, but this is definitely one of the best reads that I've had this year. Okay, so the next question is, what is the best sequel that I've read so far this year? And I'm actually going to be talking about a entire series. Because I haven't read any sequels yet. I'm actually reading one right now. I'm reading um, Blood and Honey, which is the second book of Serpent and Dove. But I haven't finished that, so I'm not going to be talking about that. Um, but the series that I chose for this is The Remnant Chronicles, I think. The Remnant Chronicles. So the first book in the series is The Kiss of Deception, if you guys are interested in reading it. This is definitely my favorite series so far that I've read this year. The fantasy aspect was actually really rich in this book, especially in book 2 and book 3. Sequel-wise, either book 2 or book 3 are actually really strong sequels. So the reason why I really love this series is, for one, it has actually a really good and strong plot. I also really enjoy the character there is mostly our protagonist who is very strong and also so loving and empathetic and soft in the ways that matter. So I really did enjoy the series. So if you guys want a fantasy series to read this year, this series honestly I haven't heard about it anywhere else. I just picked it up from the bargain reader I think and um, I'm not sure if they still have this on sale there. But I do recommend that you guys pick it up if you have the chance. I really did enjoy it so yeah. Okay, so question number three is what is a new release that I haven't read yet but really want to? So the answer for that is Chain of Iron, which is the second book of Cassandra Clare's The Last Hours series. So the first book was Chain of Gold, which I read last year and really, really enjoyed. Honestly, all of Cassandra Clare's books, I just really love to read. Like, she's really built the Shadowhunter universe really well and I feel like anything that she releases. Even though I've read so much of these series under the Shadowhunter universe, I still will be consuming those books because they're generally just wonderful stories and I really do enjoy her writing style and also the characters that she writes. So yeah, this is a book that I really want to get to. Okay, so the next question for this tag is what is the biggest disappointment of this year? So the book I chose for this is Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi and I actually have a vlog on this. Um, reason being is because I it's not a bad book. I gave this book 3 or 3.5 stars, I think. It's just that I think I had higher expectations for this book, especially because of the plot which centers around relationships between two sisters, two estranged sisters. And I think I generally have high expectations for books that revolve around the relationships of the characters. I think that this book let me down in that aspect. It wasn't a satisfying ending. It wasn't a satisfying tying up of events. And I think that this book just overall could have been so much more than what it was so this was quite disappointing for me not saying that it's a bad book still a solid read did not live up to the idea of what it was gonna be in my head so yeah okay so the next question is what is the biggest surprise of this year and the book that I chose is um, Lisa Jewell's The Family Upstairs which is a thriller and the reason why this was such a big surprise for me is because I have read a good number of recommended thrillers and a lot of times I am let down by them but I have to say that this actually is one of my favorite thriller novels. Um, I really enjoyed the plot. I really enjoyed the buildup of the story and also just everything about it was really so interesting and exciting for me and 
I felt like this was such a surprise. Definitely a thriller that I enjoyed and was very interested in. So yeah, I would definitely recommend this for those of you who like thrillers. Okay, so the next question is who is my favorite new author? for this year and I chose Haruki Murakami for this because of this book which is Colorless Shikuru Itazaki and his years of pilgrimage. The reason why I chose Murakami is because he has a general like writing style where you can't necessarily distinguish between dream and reality and ultimately he makes you realize that sometimes it just doesn't really matter. And I feel like overall Murakami is just really great at making you think after you read a book and I feel like that's what I really appreciate about his writing style so it has to be Murakami. So yeah. Okay, so the next question is who was my newest fictional crush? And um, this is actually a really easy answer. Um, it has to be Wrath, which is one of the seven princes of hell from Kingdom of the Wicked, which is also another book that I genuinely really enjoyed. I don't know, he's just a character that you just genuinely really enjoy and he has- I mean like he's a prince of hell, like it's not even- <laughs> Like, it's not even surprising. Like, he's a prince of hell and then he has his soft sides. And because of that, you end up liking him. So, yeah. This is... He's definitely a huge fictional crush that I have. And I was really super killing when I was reading this book. So, that's my answer for that question. Okay, so the next question is... What is a book that has made me cry? So, I think there's more than one book that actually made me cry this year. But... The most obvious one has to be Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. And I think that this is very obvious because of the plot itself. So basically, Samantha McAllister is a girl who suffers from OCD and she generally has a hard time um, trying to be her true self because her like childhood friends, which is the popular group, um, would judge her if they knew who she really was. So this book is pretty much kind of like Dead Poet Society. Um, where she finds her own small group and she's just able to find herself. So it was very heartwarming. The ending was... it's a lot. So um, this is not a light book. This might make you cry. It made me cry. It was still heartwarming. Would I recommend it? Yeah, I think you guys can go give it a read. It's a really easy read, um, but it's not a light read, that's for sure. So yeah. So the next question is, what is a book that made me happy? So it was kind of difficult for me to, to choose a book that made me happy because most of the books I've read this year like dealt with a lot of heavy topics, I realized. But this one is a book that surely made me happy. This is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. It is part of the Crescent City series. This is a book that generally made me happy because it's not a light book. It definitely has a lot of depth into it. But it definitely made me happy because of the characters. Mostly because of our protagonist who is a very strong, witty character. Um, and I like her strength as well. I admire it a lot. She has a lot of really good jokes. Um, and she's really good at creating a good environment and good co and creating good conversations as well. This book had really good scenes that really made me happy. There was definitely a time that I cried <laughs> during this book. But overall, I did really like this book. It did make me happy. I'm still happy about it. I love it. I gave this five stars. Would recommend. So the next question is, what is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year? So I didn't buy any special editions this year yet, but my favorite cover has to be um, Blood and Honey, which is the second book of Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahorin. And one of my favorite also, which I think I talked about a lot, is Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi, which is because of the intertwining hands and the pages. Um, Overall, I really like these covers a lot, but I do want to show you guys the a book that I've already read last year. But it's definitely one of my favorite covers um, or editions ever, which is A Tale for the Time Being um, by Ruth Ozeki. It's really simple, but I really like how it looks. And it's definitely one of the favorite books that I own, which I think is really beautiful and simple. So the last question is, what is a book I need to read by the end of the year? So one of the top books that I need to read is All the Light We Cannot See um, by Anthony Dower. This won a Pulitzer Prize. I really want to read this. Reviews for this are great. Another book that I've been putting off and I've actually been consciously avoiding is a book that I've had since the start of the year. No, since last year actually. I got this book last year um, during the start of quarantine as A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. And the reason why I've been putting this book off is because I really don't know if I'm in the proper headspace for this. It's a very heavy book. It's a very sad book. 
um, and I don't know if I'm ready for it yet, honestly. Um, but this is a book that I definitely plan on reading sometime in the future. And another book that I have to get to reading is Cricket Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. So I've read Six of Crows last year. Still haven't gotten around to reading the second book. Mostly because I just don't want the series to end. But yeah, I do have to get into this just so I don't forget everything else that has happened. So yeah, basically this is the end of the book tag. I, I've definitely read more books than what I've shown earlier. So if you guys are interested and knowing what I've read or what I'm currently reading, you guys can follow me on Goodreads. Um, I do add people back. I write reviews as well. Um, you can also follow my bookstagram. That's where I update what I'm currently reading and also just a little bit of stuff about my life. You can also follow my main Instagram. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope I can see you guys in my next couple of vlogs and also in my future sit down videos. So, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.